Hi, it's uh, Andrew Morgan here. I just wanted to talk about some of the common eye conditions that we regularly encounter in practice and what you can do about them, especially at a time like this. So, do your eyes feel sore, gritty, sandy? Feel as though you've got something in them? Do they go a little bit red? Or do they, does your vision vary a little bit? Or do your eyes water a lot? If so, then you may have a problem with your eyes being a little bit on the dry side, have dry eyes. Yes, surprisingly, even if your eyes are watering, that could be a sign that your eyes are dry in the first place. The purpose of tears is that every time we blink, we produce fresh tears and they get washed across the front of the eye and get rid of debris and bacteria, keep the eye healthy. Now, tears are remarkably complex uh, and I'd like to just sort of try and explain in a simple way how they're actually made up. We can think of having tears having three different layers. Bottom layer is what's called the mucin layer and that comes from the conjunctiva, the bit that covers the white part of your eye. And the mucus is the sort of sticky bit. Now, mucus is part of the tears quite normally, but if we get an infection like conjunctivitis, the eyes produce a lot of mucus, and that's why everything goes sort of sticky and gummy and your eyes are stuck together in the morning. But mucus is a normal part of the tear composition. So the mucus is the bottom layer. Middle layer is the watery tears. They are the bit that come from the lacrimal gland in your top lid. And they're the ones that sort of are watery and salty tasting. If you, we're upset or in pain, we produce an excess amount of those and they tend to leak out. The top layer is the lipid layer, and that comes from glands in your lids. And that acts like a seal. It's there to stop the rest of the tears evaporating. So if you have a problem with the lipid layer, then the rest of the tears evaporate and your eyes become dry. Now, dryness in the eyes is a combination of factors. It depends on your tears and also in the environment that you're in. Unfortunately, our tear secretion does tend to decrease as we get older, so dry eyes becomes more of a problem with time. There is a hormonal component of it as well, so changing hormone levels can affect things. The dryness of our eyes is also affected by our general health and any conditions that we have. Arthritis particularly can affect the tear composition and make the eyes dry out a little bit, and also certain medications can affect uh, the tears as well. The dryness of our eyes is also affected by the environment that we're in. So air conditioning, central heating, that can dry things out. Also, what we're doing. So when we're concentrating on things, particularly looking at computer screens nowadays, it's been shown that our blink rate goes down a lot. In normal conversation, people blink roughly once every 10 seconds or so. But when we're looking at computer screens, it's sort of shown that we may only blink once every 30 or 40 seconds. So we're producing about a third of the tear volume, and that is actually causing the eyes to dry out considerably. So I know it's easy to say, but looking at a computer screen, you should have breaks from it occasionally. There's a sort of 20 second, 20, 20 rule. Every 20 minutes have a 20 second break by looking 20 meters away. It does help, you know, it's easy, difficult to do, but it can help a lot. So if we are having problems, our eyes are sore, gritty, dry, what can we do about it? Well, we can try and affect the environment that we're in and take appropriate breaks from looking at computer screens. But sometimes what we need to do is just help our tears a little bit. And the way we do that is using artificial tears or lubricating drops. Unfortunately, it's not a, a course of treatment that you can take for six days like antibiotics and it cures the problem. Now, there are lots of products out there. And if you go into any supermarket, pharmacy or optician, you'll see lots of different types of products. You can go from fairly inexpensive drops to quite sophisticated, more expensive ones. Perhaps the most traditional drop is something called hypermellows. Now they all come with different brands on them, but if you look at the packet, you'll see the composition and hypermellows has been around for quite a while and it works and it's fine and it's cheap, but I think there are better products available nowadays. So what I always look for in a drop is something that's got sodium hyaluronate in it and products like these and these are very good products and they last longer basically than hypermellows in the eye. I also look for something that's preservative free. If you're going to be putting something in your eye on a regular basis, which unfortunately we're going to have to do, then you want something that's not going to cause an irritation. If we're using drops that got preservative in them, then quite frequently after a period of time, people develop a, an irritation to that preservative there. So you put the drops in to help with the discomfort, but the preservative in there is causing an irritation as well. So always try and use a preservative free solution if you can. If you have difficulty putting drops into your eyes, there is a spray available which you can use, which helps a lot with dry eyes. Uh, there are others available as well. Basically with this, all you do is line the nozzle up, 
close your eyes and spray onto your lids. The liposomal spray, as it's called, permeates onto your lids and acts very much like the lipid from your own lids. Very useful for people that suffer from Parkinson's and have dry eyes. If our eyes are feeling uncomfortable and we put a drop in, it will certainly soothe things. But I find these drops work probably better as a preventative thing. So if you put them on a regular basis, say four times a day, meal times, it will keep the moisture content of the eyes up and help stop them getting to that irritable stage in the first place. If you find your lid margins, the edge of the lids, are a little bit red, a bit sore, you may have another condition called blepharitis. And this is often associated with dry eyes and also problems with the little meibomian glands that produce the lipid as part of the tears. In that case, we need to have a look at the lids as well. Now, there's sort of several ways of doing that. And what we need to do is look at cleaning the lids to start off with. You can try the, as I call it, the home brew method. And basically what you need to do is get some sterile solution, some sterile saline solution, uh, moisten a cotton bud or a bit of cotton wool, and every morning and night just wipe the edge of your lids to get rid of all the debris that accumulates there. And over a period of a few days, that will clear the lids up. Now, there are special products available, such as these wipes, blink wipes, blethokine wipes, and several others, which work in a slightly better way. They're sterile, they're medicated, and they're more effective at cleaning the debris off the lids. Also, what we've got to do is to get the little myobomin glands on the lids working again. It's the myobomin glands, if you remember, that secrete the lipid, the seal on the top of the tears. So if they're working properly, it stops the rest of the tears evaporating. Trouble is, the little glands can get blocked up. So the way to do to improve that is to get a little bit of heat, a little bit of pressure, and that can free them up. Homebrew method is to get a flannel, nice and warm with some warm water, rest it on the closed eyelids, and a little bit of pressure, a little bit of movement round, and that, over a period of time, can free up the glands. The disadvantage of the flannel method is that quite quickly the flannel loses its heat and loses its effectiveness. So, there have been developed what are called eye bags. Various on the market, original one, and other ones available, and several others available. Basically, most of these have got hops and flax and such like that in them. You stick them in the microwave for a lot of time, it warms up, and then again, exactly the same thing. You lie back, put the mask on your eyelids, a little bit of pressure, and it's quite soothing. So, to summarise, what we need is a little bit of heat and pressure on our lids to make sure the myobomian glands are free and the lipid is being produced, that seal on the top of our tears. We need to make sure our lids are clear by using wipes, morning and night. And also what we need to do is supplement our own tears using artificial tears on a regular basis. One thing I do want to mention is Johnson's Baby Shampoo. In the past, Johnson's Baby Shampoo has been recommended as a treatment for lid conditions and for dry eyes, and I still see it occasionally. And I want to recommend you don't do that. And the reason being, well, if we think back, what I mentioned before was that the top layer of the tears is a lipid layer. Lipids are a form of fat. And we need that to seal off the rest of the tears to stop them evaporating. Johnson's Baby Shampoo is a detergent. And what a detergent does is get rid of that fat layer. So potentially will actually make things worse rather than better. Dry eye is an extremely common condition. It's affected by our age, our general health, the environment that we're in and what we're doing. But with appropriate treatment, it can be helped. The complete picture and treatment plan can really only be obtained by having a thorough dry eye assessment by your optometrist or your ophthalmologist. But until that's possible again, I hope this brief guide into dry eyes and what to do about them has been of help.